Well, hello, and thank you for uh, checking this video out uh, today. As I told you yesterday, uh, we will be posting uh, video updates uh, um, almost daily and sometimes multiple uh, video posts. For example, later today, there will be an additional post coming from uh, our Chase Falk and Lance Griffin, and they're going to be talking about our media strategy. Uh, in other words, how to connect with us, uh, where to find stuff, what's going to be broadcast and rebroadcast in all the different uh, venues, um, uh, uh, Facebook Live, live stream, video on demand. How do you access all of those different things? And so I, I want to encourage you to watch for that posting again, most likely this afternoon, and it will help you stay connected to our various medias and uh, the messages that we'll be running. Of course, as I mentioned yesterday, this coming Sunday, we will be live at 10 a.m. Uh, with uh, um, uh, worship music, and then I'll be bringing a message. In particular, my message is going to address fear and the last days, and this series we're in will continue that, and uh, I hope that you will join us um, uh, Sunday morning at 10 for that one single live stream broadcast. But in our various channels, again, as will be uh, made clear in the coming post this afternoon, uh, will help you understand how uh, the different, uh, how you can connect with the different kinds of uh, media presentations, what will be airing and running uh, for you in the days ahead. I also want to call your attention to the fact that uh, we want you praying, and there are some specific things uh, that you need to uh, be praying. Those will be posted uh, later today as well, just as a reminder, uh, our Chuck Locke uh, shared those this past Sunday in our worship, but we'll be posting those specifically uh, on our Facebook uh, site and uh, our webpage, and you can pick those up uh, there and know how to pray uh, in these interesting uh, days. Now, having said that, I want to share just a word of encouragement with you uh, today from uh, God's Word, and uh, I want to talk to you about uh, what I'm calling Kingdoms in Conflict. Uh, a bunch of years ago, I read a book by Charles Colson entitled Kingdoms in Conflict, and he talked about that uh, we live in two worlds as believers. We certainly do. There's the kingdom of man, and there's the kingdom of God, and sometimes they don't align perfectly. And um, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, we get a bit of a sense of these uh, kingdoms. Uh, listen to what the writer says. He says, see that you do not refuse him who is speaking. That's God. For if they, and that was Israel, um, did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns us from heaven. He goes on to say, At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and with awe, for our God is a consuming fire." You know, the writer of Hebrews here speaks of several things as it relates to the whole idea of kingdoms. For example, in verse 26, he speaks of, of uh, shaking kingdoms, and he's talking about the earthly kingdoms of this world. Uh, I want to invite you, by the way, to tune in tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, on our, um, our Ridgecrest uh, page and through uh, our live stream uh, you will uh, hear a message by me entitled The Rise and Fall of Nations. And really, that's what the writer here in Hebrews is talking about, that nations rise and fall, that God shakes the nations. And, uh, and sometimes uh, God is communicating a message uh, in the shaking process. Um, I've been asked in these days, do I believe that uh, this is a, a warning from God? Well, I believe that God uses a lot of things to warn us. We live in a broken and fallen world. Disease and sickness are part of that. Famine and death are part of that. Uh, and certainly those are factors in the last days. Could this be a, a warning from God? It could. Is it? I can't say for sure. 
But I will tell you this, anytime we find ourselves in a kingdom that is shaking, it ought to turn our eyes toward God. And so he speaks about this, these kingdoms of the world that are shaken. And in particular, he says the world was shaken uh, all the way back when God spoke his law to Moses and to the people of Israel and to uh, subsequently those who would follow. He said that was the first great shaking. But then he says in the latter days, there will also be a shaking of kingdoms. And he's talking about earthly kingdoms. And, uh, uh, and so there is this whole matter of kingdoms that will shake and be shaken until Christ comes and establishes the eternal kingdom. But then he speaks of a stripping away. In verse 27, I think it's interesting, he says that, and listen carefully, that yet once more indicates the removal of things that are shaken. That is, things that have been made in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. He's talking about uh, stripping away the things of the kingdoms of man where man relies on so that man will turn uh, to God. Uh, is that what's happening now? Again, I don't know, but I could say this to you. This is the time to see that things that are being shaken and stripped away from us can point us to God. As Jesus said, uh, when the world is shaken, lift up your heads toward heaven because your redemption draws nigh. And so there is the stripping away process of things that aren't eternal. That's what the writer is saying. You know, in our culture, we've seen in just the last two weeks things that have been suddenly stripped away that have been such a part of who we are, but they're not things that are necessary to be a part of the kingdom of God or to focus our eyes and hearts on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So he speaks of this stripping away. And then he speaks of uh, a saving king. You say, he does? Yeah, where is that? Well, it's in verse 28. He says, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom. And he's talking about the kingdom of God that comes through uh, uh, receiving a, re a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen, if you're watching this and ha have never trusted Christ as your per uh, personal Savior, there's no better time than right now. As things are being stripped away, whether that's permanent or temporary, this is a time to focus on God personally in your life. And so I want to invite you to put your trust in Jesus Christ and Him alone. The writer says we can be grateful if we have received that kingdom. In other words, if we're a part of the kingdom of God. You say, well, how do I do that? Well, you can do that right now, right where you are. You can call upon uh, Christ. The Bible says, whosoever calls upon uh, uh, the name of the Lord will be saved. And right where you are, you can offer a prayer from your heart that goes something like this. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love me and you died on a cross for my sins. I know that I need you, and I invite you to come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior and my Master. If you do that, guess what? You are aligning yourself with the kingdom of God. That doesn't mean you're defying the kingdom of man, but you are connecting with the eternal kingdom. Paul said that our citizenship is in heaven. Ultimately, uh, that's where we want it to be because that is the unshakable uh, kingdom of God. And by the way, we would love to know about your decision to follow Christ. Just uh, uh, message us about that, and we'd love to send you some material, if you would like, free, no strings attached, and just say, you know what, I prayed today and trusted Christ as my Savior. We'd love to help you in that new relationship. So message us and let us know if you did that. And then he speaks of, of a, a stable kingdom. You know, he talks about this kingdom that cannot be shaken. The only kingdom that will not be shaken ever is the kingdom of God. Um, it will stand forever. Just It's based on the Word of God. And Scripture tells us the grass withers and the flower fades, but the Word of our God stands forever. His kingdom is based on His Word. It will uh, be established now and forever. And so he speaks of that kingdom. That's why it's so important that you align yourself with the eternal kingdom. Again, not to defy the earthly kingdom, but simply to align yourself with the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ by receiving him as your personal uh, Savior. And then he speaks of, and lastly I would tell you, 
um, a surrendered life. And uh, he, he talks about what that looks like. That means I know that I'm a part of the kingdom of God. And because I am, it manifests itself in a life that is surrendered to the things that count forever. Um, and he talks about expressing thanksgiving or gratitude for uh, this kingdom that we uh, as, as believers are a part of, this enduring kingdom. And that is something to be grateful for. Uh, secondly, he talks about um, uh, offering to God worship, a surrendered life. Paul said that uh, this is a pleasing sacrifice that we worship God. And so we're offering ourselves in worship to him. Times like we're going through right now, which could get worse, are times to worship, to turn our total being to God and reconnect with him if we've wandered and connect with him if we haven't and uh, uh, worship and exalt him if we know him. And then it's a time of surrender by reverencing God. He talks about offering to him the reverence that he, uh, that he deserves. Listen, he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Uh, he will rule forever. This kingdom we're in uh, will not last forever. The kingdoms of this world. But his will, and he is the king of that empire, if you will. He is worthy of our reverence. In fact, do you know the Bible says that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess uh, that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The day is coming when all humanity will kneel to God. Some will kneel uh, in adoration. Some will kneel out of compulsion. But all will kneel before him. Make sure when you kneel before the King of kings and the Lord of lords, it's out of adoration and it's out of uh, gratefulness for having a relationship with his kingdom. And then last, uh, surrendered life manifests itself, uh, the writer points out, in awe. God is awesome. And uh, what is happening in our world today is not a surprise to him. Uh, it hasn't shaken him. It has shaken our world, but it hasn't shaken him. Uh, God is the same uh, today as he was yesterday and will be tomorrow. And that's why we must turn our eyes and our hearts toward him. And so this uh, word that uh, the writer of Hebrew gives us is actually um, an encouraging word because he says because all of these things are, are happening, the shaking and the shakings to come, he says we can be grateful. In other words, we can take courage in the midst of the shaking if we are aligned with the right uh, kingdom, the kingdom of God. I hope you are, and I hope this is an encouragement to you uh, in these days to make sure that you've aligned yourself with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Well, again, I invite you to uh, join us by live stream this evening, 6 o'clock, for uh, my message, uh, The Rise and Fall of Nations. And then, of course, Sunday, live streaming again at 10 a.m. Check, Keep following us on Facebook. Uh, we'll continue to make uh, posts uh, as well as on our website, www.rbcdothan.org. And then be certain to check out the video that is posted this afternoon, which will give you further instructions on how to connect with the various uh, platforms and media uh, arms that we use uh, to communicate uh, with you. Um, keep your eyes on Jesus right now, and I'll be back in the days that follow with other encouraging words for you. Until then, God bless you.